Hi, Moglets. Really excited for today. I've been looking forward to Ron May ever since she was announced. A new five star buffer, my favorite type of unit, actually. We did prepare a bit in advance, so we shouldn't have too much farming to do, but we'll see. We may have over farmed a little bit on these again, but it's fine. Level 50, 60, there's level 70. We don't necessarily need to get her to 80 right now because we have access to the last bonus ability now, and this is an incredibly important bonus ability. Let's talk about her normal skills first. Basic attack is basic, not much to say there, actually. Actually, she will be doing basic very often though, because she only needs to do her skill once every three turns. So we're going to get that up to four for now. Her skill increases the whole party's damage and break efficiency for three turns. One turn goes away when Ron May takes action. Unlike Tingyun's three turn buff, where it's based on the buffed unit's turn. I personally prefer it like this. Honestly, it's less skill hungry in general and much easier to control. But yeah, of course, this is very important. We get a bigger damage boost as we raise it. Going up nearly 2% per level here, we're gonna leave it at six. Ultimate is probably the most important skill though. This is another team-wide buff increasing all type resistance penetration. Again, we'll leave that at six. So 20% all type res penetration. It also deals some extra damage based on Ron May's ice break damage, which also goes up a couple percent per level here. And the other effect is that it can extend a weakness broken enemy's broken state. So keep them down longer. It's basically like CC here when you think about it. Her talent's a little bit separated from the rest of her kit. It's 9% speed at level six here. There's no trigger requirements or anything for this. It's just 9% extra speed when she's in your team, which is honestly a pretty decent team-wide speed boost, you know? just it being there. And then when allies break enemy's weakness, Ron May will again come in and do 90% of her ice break damage. And she should have a lot of ice break damage because you should be building her with a lot of break effect, primarily for her bonus ability here. If you build her with 180% break effect, using her skill, which you should have a 100% uptime on, will give allies 36% damage. Combined with her skill, she's giving a pretty permanent 60% damage buff to everyone, which is kind of insane, alongside everything else she's doing. So we're of course gonna get that. We are working a little bit backwards here, I guess, but yeah. Her other bonus abilities are pretty simple. Here we get five energy at the start of her turn, which is still a very nice ability. And then over here, we get increased break effect by 20% for all allies, assuming including herself, which is good, because she, again, she needs a lot of break effect. We're now gonna go around getting these small buffs. Yeah, everything else costs purples, so we are still missing like almost 20% break effect here and three speed, but I am going to build her pretending we have these because we literally will later. We could get her to E1 because someone's went really well yesterday, but for the sake of the showcase, we're not. But E1 is very good. 20% Def Ignore while the ultimate is running. Def Ignore is a very valuable buff. E2 is a little bit less impressive in my opinion. It's a 40% attack buff when attacking weakness broken enemies. Enemies should be weakness broken pretty often, but still, in my opinion, it's just not nearly as good as E1. With E4, anytime an enemy is weakness broken, Ron May will get 100% break effect for three turns. This should influence at least somewhat how you build her at E4. Even so, I don't think it's an amazing E4. E6 sounds pretty good though. Uh, we get a three turn ultimate now instead of a two turn ultimate and the Talon's break damage multiplier additional increases by 200%. Uh, big number there, so for a support at least, she's gonna probably be doing some really big damage at E6. In conclusion, I think E1 is the only really amazing one. Like, of course, E6 is amazing, and if E6 was actually E2, then I'd be like, yeah, try and get E2 or whatever, but it's not, so. That said, I still think she's going to be a really good support at E0. E1 is a very nice to have, but at the end of the day, it doesn't change how she works. Your units will just do more damage. Before we move on to Relics, let's talk about Lycone. I think by far the best of the four stars is Memories of the Past. We have a lot of break effect here, but possibly more importantly, we also get seven energy every time she attacks. She's not going to attack every turn because she needs to do her skill, but other than that, she should attack most turns. Her ultimate is super important, of course, so all energy regeneration is gonna be good. So for now, we'll give her this. Honestly, we're probably just gonna leave it at level 50 though, because I will eventually give her her signature. Giving her any other card will make her build a lot harder because none of them have break effect. But if you have nothing else, past and future from the Forgotten Hall shop, works as long as you speed tune appropriately for it. Planetary Rendezvous would be really good in a Jingliu Pella team. As for build, we've given her a couple things already. Finally, a character that actually wants this set, I guess. We also have a break effect set for Link and Ball, the Talia set here, but as you can see, I don't really have a lot of them. So we're gonna go with something else. Besides that, Talia needs your Mate to be at least 145 speed, which I'm not sure I would even want her to be that fast. We'll think about Link and Ball later. For now, I'm thinking about actually going two-piece Thief and two-piece 
something else or just broken set entirely because we only have one crit rate body with break effect sub and zero speed boots with break effect sub. So I'm sure we can get more break effect just going broken. Wow, these Hanya speed boots with 24% break effect. Okay, I think we're gonna take those. I'll give Hanya something else. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna give her a broken keel because I think we're good on, on uh, break effect. Even though she's a support and I'm not really trying to make her deal damage or anything, I still think ice damage boost would be good here because I do feel like at the moment she can do a lot of break damage at least with the mass amount of break effects she has and the boosts in her kit and another break effect. Okay, I think we definitely have enough break effects now. Her body piece kind of sucks right now anyway, so I'm gonna change that. Damn. We actually needed one effect res roll. Oh, lucky. Last one we got effect res. I mean, yeah, it's broken set, but the pure stats are way better than like the six speed we're getting with that. But yeah, we still have enough speed, enough break effect, even without taking the future into consideration. Energy rope, enough effect res for broken keel, some ice damage boost, I guess. I'm still not really sure how much that's going to impact anything, but yeah. All in all, I'd say she's pretty much ready to go. I actually do kind of want to get her up to 80 just so she maybe survives a little bit better helps compensate for our level 50 memories of the past. I usually do like to start out a bit light just to see what's going on. So how about a good old Cavern of Corrosion run? Huh, but actually like everyone needs to use their skill. I mean, it was kind of the same case when I had Tingyun instead of Ron May here. So I needed to kind of save a skill point for her and do that. She did just do like 15k with her basic because it broke the enemy. If I use the support ability on Imbibitor now, that's a little bit annoying because generally you want to use Ronmei's ultimate right after she attacks to maximize the length of her ultimate. But in this case, I just kind of want to get a really big attack. So we're going to go ahead and use her ultimate. Uh, we'll get some resistance penetration. That was like the worst time to use it because she's coming up now and there is a whole turn gone already, just so you know. But I just want to see uh, if we can get some uh, deep, de <laughs> oh my God, okay, 216K there. Would be nice to actually break the monkey to kind of see how that works as well, but it looks like he might just die first. Also, we didn't really have good elements to weakness break in the first place. Silver Wolf and also the four star shoe something would probably be really good to pair with her as well. I mean, just with Silver Wolf, you can basically take whoever you want to take and she'll apply an appropriate weakness to them. Even though I really like Branya and will probably just go back to using her anyway, I want to at least give Silver Wolf a try in this team. I mean, I guess just to get an idea about the weakness break efficiency from Ron May's skill, a fully charged base basic would take half of his bar away with Rodney's skill going. I might try and see what it is without. In fact, her skill is not going anymore so we can see. Yeah, I mean, that is a pretty big chunk. If we had her skill going, he'd be broken with this attack. And the math checks out also. If we zoom in really closely, we'd probably pretty much be about to fit two of those white bars into the yellow bar, which means one white bar equals 50%, and she increases break efficiency by 50%. This was first grade math with Moga. Anyway, let's actually go ahead and do her skill now, and uh, we can do her ultimate now as well. Let's uh, def down the ape over there. But yeah, I actually want to see what happens. Let's uh, reapply something here it doesn't really matter okay good weakness broken let's try and not kill him before he tries and gets back up oh no just a normal basic okay we're good oh but then he died i'm gonna try one more time so yeah the ape will try and get up now recovered from entanglement and he just gets broken again okay finally we can see it it's actually really cool. We do have some new Sim Universe stuff. I've heard this was kind of a nightmare. The uh, gold and gears. We might give that a little look-see just to, uh, you know, continue on the showcase. Along with the new erudition path, which is really great for our genti havers. But we'll probably just stick with Embibitor for now just because I'm like most used to him. What the heck? This is actually kind of complicated. Oh yeah, of course we have new erudition cards as well. Wait, why the hell happened? That's kind of startled me. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm not sure I can really show much here anyway, and I didn't really want to turn this into a Golden Gears Let's Play, so we're gonna go ahead and end. Of course, we do got the new Memory of Chaos. As usual, I'll probably save the hardest stages for God Mode, but we could probably do a few of these, like seven, eight, nine. I think just having another five-star support in general is cool for stuff like Memory of Chaos, because I can never decide where I'm gonna use Branya. So like, I could use Branya down here with, with the wind weakness, and I can use her up here with the ice weakness, for example. Over here, we could do pretty much a full ice team with Pella and Jingliu. Coincidentally, the memory turbulence is all about breaking enemy's weakness, adding a hit per action. At the start of cycles, enemies will take damage depending on how many stacks they have of that. Honestly, I could never get my Jingliu to do that much damage. It is possible she was never 
actually built all that well, but we'll see what she can do with the support of Ron May here. Yes, that's actually perfect. Now I have enough to do her ultimate right after her turn. Got the res pin boost. We can actually go ahead and do Jingle Yu's ultimate. We should have like most of the buffs right now. All type res pin, 20%. The overtone increasing damage dealt by 60%. Speed by 9%. That's just a default thing that's always there from Ron May. So this actually should be solid. I believe the enemies are death broken from Pella as well, if that worked. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I kind of messed her up at one point because that wasn't really a super impressive attack there. But also, dude's still weakness broken. Oh, okay, that was a much better attack though. Might want to try and weakness break this dude over here before he gets his, his attack off. That actually should be easy with this attack here. Nice. Oh my God. Okay, wait. Yeah, Ron May's break damage is actually kind of kind of insane. She just did like 50K with a basic because of the break damage. I've never really gotten into the nitty gritty of break stuff because I never cared that much, but I guess it's important now. So yeah, that took three cycles. Honestly, not bad at all. That's also very cool. We get all the rewards from stage one through six as well and can move straight on to eight now. Actually, I guess we will stick with pretty much the same team here because ice weakness. But yeah, with like mono ice team and the enemies have ice weakness, of course, it's actually working out pretty well. Ooh, that was a big 177 attack. We actually should get it here though. There we go. Uh, we can go ahead and do uh, Jingle Yu's ultimate as well here. 125, actually very solid still. Oh yeah, and her ultimate is still going. So let's try and get these flowers on these dudes. 52k break damage. That is kind of decent for a support. She does have pretty low crit rate, so that might be like one thing. That one was a two cycle, actually quite insane. And then a three cycle. I do think the second half is generally at least a little harder. We had Sparog there. For stage nine, I think the teams are actually fine. We could probably swap out Silverwolf here because we already got imaginary weakness. And sure, Hanya. I really like Hanya. I wish she was a higher idol on, but I think she pairs nicely with Imbibitor. Hopefully ultimate. Yeah, that's actually working out really well. It could be the memories of the past light cone. I'm going to be curious, like when we get for her signature light cone, if she can still get her ultimate around this time. Of course, there are other variables, like if the enemies are attacking her, because then she gets extra energy as well. But we'll see. I do think Mem memories of the past is a very good card, though. I got to remember, we are actually on, you know, floor nine already. So even though it goes all the way up to 12, I don't think floor nine is just magically going to be easier. 11 and 12 are just going to be insane, probably. But yeah, I guess we will see that soon. So far, though, I think she is an amazing support. Comparing to the other five star buffer we have at the moment, Branya, I think they are pretty different characters. Ron May focuses a lot on weakness break and increasing damage. Branya is pretty special, though, because of her skill boosting a character to the front. And sure, while the damage boost for Branya is single target and Ron May's is AoE, you generally only have one unit doing the real damage there anyway, so I don't think that matters too much. Branya also dispels a debuff, which can really come in handy sometimes. Branya definitely feels more like a typical five-star buffer. She buffs damage, attack, crit damage. I think when we start looking at Eidolons, which honestly isn't even fair because Branya is a standard banner unit, and most people will eventually get some Eidolons for her. Whereas if you want Eidolons for Ron May, you kind of have to go for it now or one day when she comes back. But yeah, when we start looking at Eidolons, I would say Ron May kind of edges out in terms of like actually buffing your team, mainly at E1 and E2. Cause again, she has some pretty unique buffs like ignoring target death and the resistance penetration on ultimate here. Also, I think Ron May herself is capable of a lot more damage than Branya just because of the nature of how she's being built with tons and tons of break effect. I think Branya is really nice and will always be nice for like cycle reasons. Of course, Branya is a lot more skill hungry than Ron May. Ron May needs one skill point every three turns. Whereas with Branya, I would do her skill every turn for the, you know, big damage boost and bring someone back to the front. I do feel like building a team around Branya is a little bit more complicated in terms of like speed tuning because of her skill, because of the fact her own action will be advanced forward if she uses a basic. I have her in four piece hacker space, so all allies get a 12% speed buff for a turn. So it can honestly get pretty messy. I don't think Ron May replaces Branya or power creeps her really. She can overall give a bigger straight damage boost uh, from her bonus ability and skill combined. The all type res pin is a very good buff as well, but she does increase attack or crit damage, which of course are also important for dealing damage. If I had to say one thing or another, everything being 
being equal. I would say Ranmei is better overall just because she does have some unique buffs, but that's of course not to say go binge Branya if you got Ranmei or don't pick her after you do 300 standards because Branya is still an amazing character, especially for Memory of Chaos when you need two teams anyway. Branya is one of those characters I'm sure I will never regret raising or picking from my 300 standards. Let me know what you think though in the comments down below about her. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.